This lecture corresponds to chapter 11, section 1 in your text. The major topic of discussion here is gender issues in societies around the world. Please get out a separate piece of paper so that you can write down answers to questions throughout the lecture. This paper will be your study guide. Alright, so first a couple of definitions. Gender is defined as the behavioral and psychological traits considered appropriate for males and females. However, this is not scientific. Gender traits can be different depending on the society. Gender is learned. Men do not have a genetic predisp predisposition to be hunters. Women do not have a genetic predisposition to be homemakers. Nearly everything that we use to describe differences between men and women, besides of course physical characteristics, are learned traits. The other definition important to know is gender roles. Gender roles are the behaviors and attitudes that a society establishes for men and women. Again, this is not biological, but is instead based on traditional divisions of labor and other learned concepts. Now, it's interesting to note different gender variations around the world, some of which are completely alien to the American gender concepts. Let me first mention traditional American gender concepts. In the U.S., it is common to have the man assume a traditional role as economic and safety provider in any given household. It is manly to drive a truck, not a Prius. It is manly for a man to like physical competition. It is manly to like certain types of educational pursuits, namely mathematical and scientific. It is manly to dress in a particular manner. It is manly to be aggressive, and it's manly to eat certain foods. Remember those Hardee's Angus Burger commercials? According to these, real men eat meat, and only Angus beef is acceptable for real men. Likewise, certain gender concepts also define women. It is feminine to like educational pursuits that include English, the arts, and homemaking. It is feminine to be passive. It is feminine to give special attention to appearance, leading to issues with body image and concerns with makeup, accessories, and, and hair. Fashion is also considered a feminine pursuit. It is seen as much more acceptable for women to be vegetarian or vegan. However, these gender roles are not necessarily common in every society. A simple study of three different tribes on New Guinea yielded widely different gender roles. Among the Arapesh, both men and women were commonly passive. Conversely, among the Mungdugamor, both men and women were commonly aggressive. And most distinctly, among the Chambuli, women were traditionally bossy and efficient. They did not decorate themselves with makeup or accessories and had little care for appearance. Men, however, were considered gossips. Men were more likely to be artistic, and men commonly wore makeup, spent long periods of time on their hair, and wore accessories. While all three seem different, that is all they are. It's important not to judge these differences as wrong as they are learned behaviors and not biological traits. How can we judge this as wrong without also allowing ourselves to be considered terribly ethnocentric? So how are gender roles socialized into our populations? There are many institutions that socialize us over time and in various ways. I have listed four such institutions on this slide. School, work, family, and government. Please pause the lecture and write out one way that each of these four institutions can socialize men and women on your separate sheet of paper. One of the major areas of study for social scientists has been the gender inequality that exists in society today. Beyond simply the inequalities, however, they also want to learn how these inequalities develop and perpetuate. One such social scientist was an anthropologist named Ernestine Friedel. Friedel was a sort of conflict theorist. She believed that power in society was based on the control of resources. She also believed that those who controlled these resources rose to a level of greater power in society. As she notes, men typically took on jobs that allowed them to control said resources. Men typically became meat suppliers. Women were typically gatherers of fruits and vegetables. While women typically provide the bulk of food, the food gathered by women was only meant to supply the woman's family. The meat, on the other hand, was meant to supply entire communities. Thus, even though men typically provided a smaller portion of food because of how that food was distributed and valued, men became the more valued or important members of societies. Friedel be points out that gender inequality is minimized in societies where men and women participate together in the gathering and hunting of food. Friedel then takes her argument to modern society. She suggests that women will continue to lack power in society as long as their primary economic contribution centers on the family. Yet in modern societies, women are expected to fit into certain gender roles. These gender roles leave women oftentimes dependent on men. 
She also suggests that women need to become more economically involved in money-producing ventures so that society finds greater economic need for them. However, with current gender roles worldwide, this seems a distant prospect. On your separate piece of paper, write down the name of the social scientist that was discussed on this slide. So, in American society, gender has become a political issue. Men have traditionally controlled the economic and political spheres in American society. Men typically hold the highest paying and most prestigious positions in American business and dominate all levels of government. In the House of Representatives, there are 362 men and 76 women, and in the Senate, there are currently 83 men and 17 women. That makes for a total of 93 women out of 535 possible seats, or 17%. And we all know that women have never held the position of president with Hillary Clinton or Sarah Palin getting closest to that spot. In fact, the U.S. has only had 36 female, female governors in its entire history, including only seven currently. These differences help to explain a social system that has worked to largely further the power of men, with female equality being the casualty of such actions. There have been political attempts to stop gender inequality. The Equal Rights Amendment of 1972 is an example. This bill stated that equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. Sounds pretty simple and reasonable, right? On your separate piece of paper, write down the total number of women in the United States Congress. So a movement developed to kill the Equal Rights Amendment, with many, many male-dominated state legislatures and the Phyllis Schlafly-led Stop ERA group arguing against. Two-thirds of voting-age Americans supported the amendment. However, any amendment has to be ratified by 38 states to become law. The Equal Rights Amendment was ratified by 35, so no legal equality. On your separate piece of paper, write down the number of states to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. The argument made against the Equal Rights Amendment by Phyllis Schlafly and others was that the amendment would destroy the traditional family values of Americans. So in the minds of such people, can gender equality exist in the context of traditional values? Are sexism, discrimination, and inequality traditional values? Are these values that we should continue to work to maintain? On your separate piece of paper, write answers to these questions. Again, to repeat those questions. In the minds of such people, can gender equality exist in the context of traditional American values? Are sexism, discrimination, and inequality traditional family values? Are these values that we should continue to work to maintain in our society? Still, the Equal Rights Amendment might have made gender discrimination illegal, but as we talked about in the previous chapter, institutionalized discrimination will still exist and is even more dangerous to those who wish for equality in society. This institutionalized discrimination occurs on the basis of sexism, which is the belief that one sex is, by nature, superior to the other. Because societies have institutionalized male dominance, it's become a traditional belief to accept the superiority of men. On your separate sheet of paper, write the word that is defined by the following. Belief that one sex is, by nature, superior to the other. Remember, tomorrow you will turn in this paper with the answers to the six different questions written on it.